this place. Who want to start? You? You do? Okay, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to welcome you today at the CNAM, at the Conservatoire National de, des Arts et Métiers. I am with Alexis Colomb, full professor of the CNAM in, uh, for finance, and uh, with Yves Wankin, the managing director of the museum. Personally, I'm the managing director of the CNAM. Just some words about blockchain. As you, you all know, blockchain has been in the spotlight for a few years now. And from cryptocurrencies to its use for various industrial applications, blockchain seems to be all about disintermediating unnecessary middle layers and empowering peer-to-peer -peer P2P systems, whether made of individual or earth enterprises. By mutualizing data, ensuring selective confidentiality, providing immutable traceability, blockchain technology is likely to have a deep impact on the way business is conducted across the economic fabric from financial and industrial service to supply chain management and legal services. So much about Ethereum platform, um, and I want uh, to thank you, all the community of Ethereum to be here today. You are a very active community of members, which you are part of, and uh, you are at the forefront of this transformation. And you all represent a vibrant, young, dynamic, and international community. Many of you want to change the world and make it a better place. Many of you are shaping tomorrow's future. This is also what the CNAM, what the Conservatoire National des Emissions Métiers is about. So we may come at it from a different angle. Some words about CNAM. Uh, our mission is lifelong learning education. Uh, we are, it's, it is to care about all people and to help them improve their professional skills throughout their careers, through their adult lives. We have also a museum, and uh, Yves uh, will, uh, you will to, to speak about our, our museum. For us, the museum is so important, and I hope that you can visit your museum today or, or tomorrow. Uh, in, your in our museum, you can see as uh, two centuries of uh, steady scientific progress and innovation dedicating for all the comes of human activities. Just uh, some, some, some words to conclude. Uh, we are very happy to, to, to welcome you here. I hope that you could uh, profit of uh, our hospitality. I'm delighted to... to to know that you, you are all here. Some words uh, of uh, faculty members of the CNAM as uh, Alexi. Alexi is, has introduced uh, blockchain in our, our fields and our study, and he, I think he will speak today or tomorrow here. And uh, have, uh, enjoy your conference. Enjoy the premises of our school, one of the only schools located in the center of Paris and have a good time in Paris. Thank you so much. Well, welcome to you all. Three minutes. I would say three minutes of advertisement for the museum. Um, Olivier Farron just mentioned that very museum of Art et Métier. It's totally untranslatable in English, so you will have to bear with the French uh, name. And I won't make the bad pun today, Women's Day of Le musée et la musée, forget it. Uh, anyway, go around the block, enter the museum, it's about eight euros, uh, and go around, but I would especially mention the church, so when you enter, turn to your left and again to your left, and you will be in a church, in a church because that museum uh, was installed in a former monastery around 1794, during the French revolutionary years, it was decided that Le Louvre would be for paintings and the Museum of Natural Sciences would be, of course, for animals and plants, and we would be for machines. We would lead France to scientific and industrial progress. So wh what you're going to see there are uh, emblems of industrial, scientific, technological progress. If you go to the church, you're going to see, for example, the first plane that ever went across the channel, the Blériot plane. And I would suggest you go on top of the platform, you can almost touch the plane, and you can perceive the very 
fragility. You wonder how they were able, those guys, to risk their life just to fly the first few planes. Uh, you also, and I'm addressing here uh, American visitors, you, you will see also a Statue of Liberty, and you might wonder why we have a, st a small, reduced scale Statue of Liberty. It just happened that the widow of uh, the sculptor, uh, Bartholdi, gave the very model from which uh, Bartholdi would upscale uh, his statue to the point you would have a one-to-one -one scale uh, a statue. So it's a very uh, privileged model we have here. I'm not going to advertise for the 3,000 objects we have in our museum. I'm not going to advertise for the 75,000 objects we have in our storage rooms. So just walk around, uh, enjoy the museum. He, it is especially celebrated for the very special ambiance you might find. Some people find it very steampunk, for example. And indeed, the, the overall flavor is late 19th century, earliest 20th century. Uh, so if you, even if you don't understand, like I don't, uh, well, just enjoy the ambiance. And overall, enjoy CNAM and enjoy Paris. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Very quick. Uh, good morning to all. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, I just wanted to thank again Olivier Farron, the uh, Administrator General du CNAM, for having made this possible. You know, we had to get a special authorization from uh, Olivier to have this uh, conference here. Thank you very much to Yves for his, uh, you know, great word about uh, the museum. It's a fantastic place. I think maybe next year we'll be able to uh, uh, scale up, you know. And, uh, and the last thing, you know, thank you very much for Jérôme. Uh, he approached us like a few months ago. Uh, last year there was a great conference at uh, the ES ESCP. And, you know, this year we're really pleased to have you here. And, you know, again, thank you to all your team for this fantastic work. It's a bit complex, uh, you know, the, there's like various uh, conference rooms and lectures, and so I hope that, uh, you know, as a first, uh, it would be as uh, fluid and uh, easy as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. So we're running 40 minutes late now, and uh, nobody has attacked the network yet. Oh, didn't? Well, we'll see. Can we start the, the pager? So yeah, we, we are assets. Uh, we are a very old um, association, very old nonprofit in the space. Uh, what we do is that we are a nonprofit, so we just organize stuff. Uh, we have a lot of members, 30, 100 plus. Uh, we have multiple profile. Like we don't have only devs, only engineers. We also have um, some lawyers, some people from government, some like multi profile. And uh, we participate to a lot of uh, meetups, a lot of, oh, I should have taken my glasses, I think. Uh, we feed the Ethereum France website. We also translate technical papers. And we participate to various educational progr programs, like the one at CNAM. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and stuff. Oh, and by the way, the, the link to this, um, to the live stream has been posted on Twitter and, and Reddit. So find it if you, if you like to, to, to see it. Um, Today, this conference has been brought to you by the help of these exceptional sponsors, like uh, Consensus uh, Gold, um, Silver, uh, Bronze, and Iron. Um, shout out to Status, who couldn't be there today. Uh, shout out to Aragon, to iExec, of course, and to the rest of you. Thank you very much for your support. Um, and also to Joseph Jelasek, I don't know if he is here. Um, yeah, because he brought all the t-shirts, so you'll see them later. Uh, and also the support of the Ethereum Foundation, especially Aaron Fisher. Oh, I see him working here. Hello, Aaron. Uh, he's been helping a lot on uh, con connecting all the, the, the speakers and so on. And also the CNAM that you've just heard of. Uh, exceptional partners, the one here on the camera from uh, Kabuki, uh, doing all the live stream. I don't know if the live stream is working, but I hope it is. I, I think it is, I think it is, so wonderful. So if you don't find the rooms, at least you will find the streams. Yep. Uh, for the food, the chicken, bacon, latest thing, um, go upstairs. It's hard to find, I know, but upstairs we serve uh, coffee, breakfast stuff, coffee all, almost all the time. And I take the bet the lunch will be great. 
Um, mm -hmm. So where's the agenda? So if you go on the website, hcc.io, uh, you'll find a little button here saying schedule. So if you click on schedule, you will have the, the Google Doc of the schedule uh, updated hourly, I guess. Uh, and also you can have it in PDF formats, but uh, it's probably updated yet. Uh, so how it works, you have four amphitheaters. We are in Panleve on your uh, right here, or on your left when you face the entrance, it's the, the um, Robert Faure, and on the, no, on this one is Jean-Baptiste C, and this one is Robert Faure. And if you go outside, it will be hard to find, but uh, you, you'll figure it out among the three days. You have Abbé Grégoire, and you have also a room for workshops that is hard to find because you have to go through the museum. But anyway, you'll see. So I'm lost, what's going on? Some people have red caps, those are assets volunteer. Uh, you can ask them around, they will indicate you uh, your way. Uh, and I really need Wi-Fi. So here's the Wi-Fi, uh, HCC SSID, and the password is 3THCC exclamation mark 2018. Uh, please behave with the Wi-Fi, usually this is what gets uh, down. Uh, hopefully it will work, I hope. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't, don't upload too much stuff, don't visit too much stuff. Uh, yeah, so have a good fun conference. Thank you for coming to Paris. It's a pleasure to host you here again. <laughs> and Bob? Hey everyone, I'm, uh, I'm Bob Samuel. some point we'll get it done. You want it full screen? Sorry for that. Not for here, otherwise people can't get it. Mm, we need to just cut it to the feed or just actually we don't need to cut this audio to this one anyway. Okay. Mm, so we don't need to cut the audio for this one at all. Um, for the second one we do, but not for here, only for the screen. So at the moment there's no audio playing at all. Ah, J'ai coupé l'audio en fait. Pour la vidéo. Pour la vidéo, ok d'accord. Ok, bah, reprenons la vidéo et c'est reparti. J'ai coupé sur le player. Hein. J'ai coupé sur le player en fait. Je reprends la vidéo. So, what we did before there was um, double click on that. So I get okay, over to bien. the second screen. Drag it over there. Then it was a maximize on that, which was a. On this one, I can. Okay. okay. You can. Yes, you can. We're nearly there. It begins as an idea, transforming into a problem that begs to be solved.
Okay, we're going to start now. So just pretend that last few minutes just didn't happen. And let's go. It begins as an idea, transforming into a problem that begs to be solved. Like a great cycle, each answer yields another peak, the vista promises more beautiful ends, and the new journey pushes us forward. We have our builders, our visionaries, the rebels, the troublemakers, and the dreamers. Then we arrive at a new peak. With more dreamers, more builders, a few more rebels, and of course, we still have the troublemakers. Some journeys are coming to a noble end, and some Hello. Um, so that video is four years old. Uh, and it's been quite an adventure. So Vitalik posted this up a little while ago, which was the earliest emails that he, he received from Gav. You can see there, December the 19th, 2013. Johnny gave me the heads up. I haven't determined who Johnny is. Does anyone know who Johnny is? I don't know who Johnny is. I think I asked and nobody remembered. But yeah, Johnny gave me the heads up. I can do C++. How far are you with Ethereum? Shortly after that, Ethereum was launched at the North American Bitcoin Conference in Miami. Um, and here is a, a young Vitalik. Well, he's always young anyway, but even younger. He was mobbed after that initial session. Apparently everyone, I, I, I was talking at some point to some guy who was the person presenting after him, <laughs> and the whole audience apparently left. This poor guy is left on his own. This again is in, in Miami. See, uh, see here, oh, what have we got? Got Gav, got Vitalik, Anthony DiOrio, uh, Taylor Garing. Um, who else we got here? Oh, Joe Lubin there. Various other people that I've never met, I don't think. These are photos in Toronto at the um, Bitcoin Expo, which was in April 2014, um, a couple of months later. Um, the, the Miami meeting was, uh, the, the, the Miami conference was the first time that a lot, of, uh, a lot of the team actually met for the first time in person. So it was spread around uh, between Europe and, uh, and North America. But yes, here is a Vitalik. Stefan Toile. Ian Meikle here of uh, graphic designer fame. He's done many of the uh, logos and things you'll see on the website. And that's Taylor there. Jeff Wilker. Marin and I can't quite work out who that is there. Anthony having a little look at uh, a little fragment of, not even, it, it wasn't Solidity at that point, was it? it w was that like, it's probably like Matan or something, wasn't it? In the background, we have some curious figures that you may not know. This is Amir Shetrit, who is probably the, the, the biggest 
enigma of, uh, of the founders, never, never seen again. And then here is, is Richard Stott, who is now called Richard Wild, who's at IOHK. Nice shot of Joe Loeb in there. And what Stefan's up to. I, I was told, I think by Ian, that uh, Amir would, would refuse to wear the T-shirt. He was too cool to wear, wear the T-shirt. He wanted to keep his, uh, his jacket on. But as you can see, pretty happy times. You know, um, people starting on, out on a, a brave new adventure. Anthony Diorio again. And then we hit the first schism, which I believe was in about May 2014, where Charles Hoskinson became Emmanuel Goldstein. I don't know how many people have not read 1984. Anyway, he's the, uh, the Trotsky figure in, uh, in 1984. You know, you always have to have an enemy. So Charles Hoskinson has become the evil baddie of Ethereum. And there was the first schism between Ethereum and, well, Cardano and Ethereum Classic and so on. The second schisms happened in summer 2015 or thereabouts when both Joe Lubin left to form Consensus uh, and Anthony Diorio left. Well, he didn't really leave because he wasn't so engaged. He, he got less engaged uh, and focused on, uh, on Jackson Decentral. The third schism was when Gav departed, which is really the root of uh, our Geth versus parity tensions that we see popping up now and again. Um, and I mean, really, the root of that tension, I think, is just uh, that uh, if you're outside the foundation, you know, the website, just makes it look like you've just got Geth and Mist, so not so great for anybody outside. The fourth schism, which I was involved in. Um, here's me with a silly beard. And here we have Shahan, Cook, Dameron, um, and Joseph Chow here with Vitalik, and Amber Balday of JP Morgan. And over here is Brian Bellendorf of, of Hyperledger. So really the schism in this case was really about enterprise. Our terrible enterprises trying to steal Ethereum away and subvert the project. So we've got about six factions, I think. So we have the foundation. You know, Vitalik, everyone knows, is a dictator who bailed out the Dow single-handedly. Um, I'm sorry? Um, you know, Charles is, is Emmanuel Goldstein. He is the devil. We all know that. Um, Joe Lubin of Consensus is an empire builder who only cares about money. Gav is egotistical and non-collaborative. And Anthony Diorio is an opportunist who only cares about money as well. And Hyperledger and the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance are just there trying to co-opt Ethereum for the banks and to ruin the whole project. Of course, all of these are not true. They are demonization. Because that's what humans like to do. It's very simple, isn't it, to think you have good guys and bad guys. And if only people would stop being bad and do what you like, it would all be fine, right? Yeah, not so much. 
So I really came to realize that the story really of Ethereum and, it, and starting with the founders is, uh, you know, you, you have people both in the founders and, in, and people coming along who are, you know, autistic, sociopathic, or could be labeled as egotistical, chronic social anxiety, severe depression, suicidal, greedy, selfish. But on the upside, autistic, which is a good thing in terms of thinking deeply about problems. Someone was saying to me at some point, don't try and cure autism. The planet will come to a halt. <laughs> Nobody will solve hard technical problems anymore. Um, geniuses, altruistic people, visionaries, selfless and fearless people. Because ultimately, everyone is a mixture of good and bad whatever good and bad mean, because those are value judgments as well. So my truth is that diversity is strength. You know, everyone is a mixture. We are all misfits, myself included, because neurotypical people would never have embarked on this project. You do not have these kind of crazy moonshots and People just quit their office jobs and decide, yeah, that, I'll, I'll go do that. That'll be a good idea, you know. And really, the, you know, the founders, it's just a bunch of dudes. It's just a bunch of dudes just trying to do an incredibly hard thing, which may or may not even be possible. Um, it might be illegal, but it could be awesome. So you try. Many with poor interpersonal skills, because it's just a bunch of dudes who don't really have good ways of resolving conflict. So they just stamp all over each other and piss each other off, and they don't know how to say sorry when they do that, and now they hate each other. And this is uh, not an Ethereum-specific thing. It's, it's a very common thing throughout blockchain, throughout technology, throughout dudes. But here's the thing, you know, Ethereum, it, it's, it's kind of worked, you know? It's, you know, we're not all the way there, but, you know, certainly when you look back, you know, if you could dream of where we are now four years ago, everyone would be delighted. What a fantastic success. You know, the world is waiting, the world is sold. You know, as, as Vitalik said earlier this year, you know, it's, it's kind of a matter of execution now. You know, we've got, you know, the, the supply and the demand have kind of matched up, you know. Uh, every, you know, every Fortune 500 and their dog, uh, you know, want to get to production. You know, can we, can we just solve scaling? Can we solve privacy? Can we just go? Can we get to done? Can we get to feature complete? Um, and the thing is, you know, we've, we've, we've got gigantic amounts of resourcing now, you know, so we're seeing both on the public Ethereum side and on the enterprise side, you know, giant, uh, you know, giant teams starting to form. Uh, and it's great. So, you know, we don't need to hate each other. You know, everyone's, everyone's played their role and uh, we've all got a lot more in common than we have difference. So let's all, you know, just work together. So, in terms of thinking badly about each other, which was a note I had on here, but I haven't got my notes up, was, was really that, you know, th I think the root really of demonization is, is thinking badly of someone that you've not ever really spoken to. You don't really know personally. You've just heard stuff about them secondhand, what they did, what they said, uh, because of so-and-so, blah, 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 happened. And, and it's very, very easy to have, you know, to demonize someone that you, you, you've maybe never even spoken to based on second-hand opinion or rumor. And I've done this myself. So, in 2016, uh, I was working 
to see if I could get the C++ client relicensed uh, from GPL to Apache 2. So I mean, a variety of people wanted to use it, but the primary thing really was seeing uh, if we could uh, get an Ethereum client into Hyperledger so that our answer on, on Enterprise would be, you want to do public Ethereum? Great, talk to the Ethereum Foundation. You want to do something with Enterprise? Brilliant. Go to the Linux Foundation. There's a whole bunch of companies doing stuff there. They can help you. But it didn't work. Uh, I spent five months doing the most boring paperwork ever, chasing all this shit up, and uh, it did not go through because Ethcore blocked it. Um, Gav and Marek did not sign the paperwork. They were major contributors, so it was just stalled. Um, so yes, let me read this here. For anyone reading, this is me writing. Uh, and coming away confused from the experience, it was Ethcore who blocked it. And uh, Hoddle Dwan says, I don't know how, how to feel about this. I can totally see Gavin being a pompous prick at times. Uh, but I can also clearly s tell he has convictions and thinks ahead a few steps of the average person. He doesn't talk often here or really anywhere two-sided, preferring to blog, I think, instead of engaging in debate. That's neither good or bad, but perhaps disappointing for many of us more vocal types. But at the end of the day, parity delivers. It's been shown to be a very effective client, and Gav really did a shit ton of heavy lifting in the early days of the foundation writing the C++ client. I can't really blame him for having second thoughts about what is a, over 75% of his code. It, I think it was about 30%, actually, uh, being wrapped up and closed sourced for the likes of IBM. That's also incorrect. It wouldn't be closed source. Um, do recall IBM was awfully quiet about their ADAPT platform. Anyway, um, where are we? Where am I aiming for this? That got stuck. Oh, there we go. Anyway, so I, I said, you know, saying up front, I believe that GPL is best for the community would be fine with me, but it, that isn't what happened. Um, and uh, anyway, Enterprise Ethereum is coming our way soon enough, and I think that we're going to see some heavy lifting from those resource-rich companies, but building a client is unlikely to be a priority. So really, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance came around because of that licensing not going through. It would never actually have happened if that had happened. Anyway. That really affected me very seriously. So I'll just read this through. So on the 31st of December, October, sorry, 31st of October 2016, I stood on Granville Island Bridge in Vancouver about 11 p.m., ready to throw myself to my death. I felt so helpless and powerless. I had seen what I thought was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Ethereum to be the basis for all enterprise blockchain. If we'd just completed the relicensing paperwork, there was an army of IBM engineers ready to jump into action, 30 of them, in fact, I was told, uh, and bring that code base up to the standard which it so desperately needed to reach. We could have bridged Ethereum Foundation and Linux Foundation, all with no risk of control of the public protocol, which was completely outside of any possibilities which relicensing of a specific code base would have opened up. We were a hair's breadth from glory. We just needed Gav and Marek to sign, and it was in the bag. That was a hammer blow for me. I'd been working 60 hour, 60 plus hour weeks for months and months to help build this amazing dream. I was being paid the equivalent of uh, $60,000 uh, with no vacation, no benefits, no nothing. I'd actually got myself and my family into financial trouble doing so. I'd spent five months working on the most dreary, thankless paperwork during that process. Why? Because the upside would have been world changing. And at the time, looked like a one-time opportunity. My perception was that the answer had been no for selfish reasons, but bad old Gav saw that revitalized C++ Ethereum with the resourcing of the Linux Foundation and hundreds of companies behind it would have been a huge commercial challenge to his parity business. And so he selfishly killed his first child to protect the second child. The utter selfishness of that perceived situation in my mind, together with my perilous financial situation, together with my perception of permanent missed opportunity to Ethereum was crushing. 
Combine that with my financial pain and the perception I'd failed my family and especially my wife in chasing this Ethereum dream which had turned into a nightmare. Was it all delusion that this Ethereum dream could happen? It felt that way. I felt a complete failure and that my boys would be better off with me dead than continuing to screw up again and again in a way which damaged my family and spiraled me into depression. So yeah, I, I had a spell of about, about three months of depression there, not my first depression. Many people have had depressions and I am one of them. Well, I didn't do it and I'm so glad that I didn't. Because at Cancun, at DEF CON 3, I got to spend some time with the Parity team and even a few minutes with Gav himself for the first time. First time ever, that was. So, you know, uh, been in contact with him, I guess, for about three years. Never met him until that point. Uh, and it was lovely. And I think that's really important that my impressions of Gav were based on online interactions, not having met with him, not having talked to him, um, apart from a little bit online, but pretty much secondhand. And I think that's a very, very common thing for a lot of people um, working on open source projects is, is it, it's quite rare to have time in real life to talk to people, to actually get to really know them as people. And that's very important. So over time, I've come to realize that their actions in 2016 came out of fear that the beautiful Ethereum dream would be derail derailed and corrupted. And they had to defend it, even with the collateral damage that caused. And I understand that now. I really do. Um, so this, this, this blog post, I think I wrote in, uh, in February, early February of this year. No, I lie. Mid-January. Mid um, so last week, so yeah, it would be 25th of uh, January. Last week I went to Miami, because I, uh, I went to BTC Miami for the fourth anniversary of, uh, of the launch. And I gave Krista Rose a big hug, I really did, and I really kissed him on both cheeks and gave him a big bottle of maple syrup. And we did a podcast and it was lovely. So Krista Rose is a guy who I have argued with a hell of a lot. <laughs> uh, but again, never met him. You know, and it's easy to hate people on the internet. It's not so easy to hate them when you actually talk to them, whoever they are. Because everyone in this blockchain ecosystem has got way more in common than they have differences. Even Krista Rose and me, amazingly. And it's mainly shtick. He's not actually that bad. All we have to do is open our hearts and truly listen to others. And if I can do that with Krista Rose, I can most certainly do that with Gav and with Charles and everyone else in Ethereum and within blockchain as a whole. So, and I was writing this in January, on February the 5th and 6th, I'm going to Berlin and I'm going to give Gav that beautiful, wonderful man who's been so instrumental to building this Ethereum dream, a big hug, and I did, and I'm going to kiss him on both cheeks. I didn't do that, actually. I don't think he'd have liked it. Well, I did give him the maple syrup, because there's no more room in this space for hate, for distrust, for shit-talking, and for judging people badly we've not spent quality time face-to-face -face with. I will smoke the peace pipe, and I'll revel in doing so, because I love parity and I love Gav. They have done amazing work for humanity, all free of charge, often under heavy criticism, which is so unjustified, because they have changed the world for the better. Love, not hate. This was at DevCon 3. Hudson, who should be speaking here right now, I'm filling in the gap he vacated. This is Robert from Parity, um, Peter from the Web3 Foundation, Yuri, Gav, and me. And then I went to Berlin, and I met with Gav, and I met with the Parity team. I spent, spent a full day with them, uh, spent about three hours talking to Gav in the evening. 
And I gave him maple syrup. Of course I did. I have got a British voice, but I am Canadian as well. I'm dual citizen. Anyway, Ethereum is just the start of what I'm talking about, right? The same behaviors have happened time and again across blockchain, repeated tribalism across projects. Your project is a scam. You are idiots. This is an attack. And we seem to have forgotten how science works and about facts, uh, not rhetoric, discussion, measured discussion. Just looking at Nick and thinking about, about uh, IOTA as an example. Um, but yeah, you know, in a quest to build a perfect machine, we've forgotten to be human. Because really, what we're building is for the benefits of humans. It's not really for the computers. And you know, you, you can't build a perfect machine, which uh, means that you don't have to talk to humans anymore. Those awkward humans that do things that you don't like. Anyway, I really hope that we can have you know, a, a new start within Ethereum and that at this community conference and at the, the Fellowship of Ethereum Magicians, we can really have uh, you know, the start of, of really recognizing that, that we are all one community and irrespective of uh, you know, what projects we're working on or what we're doing, you know, that we are all in it together. Wonder Woman, fantastic bit of, uh, of stuff here. Uh, I don't know if anyone uh, has not seen the Wonder Woman movie. It is fantastic. She closes the movie with, I used to want to save the world, to end war and bring peace to mankind, but then I glimpsed the darkness that lives within their light. I learned that inside every one of them, there will always be both. The choice each must make for themselves, something no hero will ever defeat. And now I know that only love can truly save the world. So I stay, I fight, and I give for the world I know can be. This is my mission now and forever. And there is another video, but you're going to have to wait a bit because we're not very smooth. So we need the audio.
So yeah, I mean, it might seem trite and naive, but the fact is, all of us have got the power to change the world. For real. You just have to choose to do so. Anyway, have fun at the conference. Be nice to each other. Be truthful, be gentle, and be fearless. And you can make a real difference. Um, you know, we are all brothers and sisters. So let's make a better world. Thank you.